system. And those that are leaving tonight to get on the road, going down to the conference, I'm sure Bishop, Brother Davey, Pastor Collins will be looking for all of us to be there, especially those that they know personally will be looking for you to be there. So I pray that you've made your arrangements to be there. And so we'll see you down there. Some are going tonight. And so we ask that you be safe on the road while it's raining. And uh, that God will get you there safely and back home. But John chapter 3, verse 3. And that's St. John chapter 3, verse 3. Acts chapter 28, 26 to 30. And if you've never gone to the Mother Church, I say please plan, try to get there. We will be going back down there for the for their anniversary, for the Mother Church anniversary. So you didn't, you're not able to go on the bus uh, to our new converts. We say to you, try to make it to the anniversary. And to all of our ministers and leaders. Uh, those are certain things that we must be at in Jesus' name. But John chapter 3, verse 3. And if you have it, somebody say amen. amen. The Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That is our first scripture text. You cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. Brothers and sisters, this is why if you're listening to preachers on YouTube that do not have the Holy Ghost, and they're talking about the kingdom of God, they're discussing to you about the things of God. I'm saying to you, if they are not born again of the water of the Spirit, they don't know what they're talking about. They can't see it. They won't see it. They won't understand it or comprehend it. And so I say to you, be careful of what your ears are open to those who do not have the Holy Ghost. Even if it sounds good. Acts chapter 28, verse 26 to 30. The Bible says, saying, go unto this people and say, hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see and not perceive or comprehend. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you, that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. Great reasoning, which means they're saying, you believe that? You take that in? Did you hear what he said? I don't know if I believe all of that. Verse 30, the Bible says that Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. With all confidence, no man forbidding him. Tonight again we will continue. There's much on this particular subject. And uh, I do plan to take my time to teach as much as I can. Unless God is moving me off of it. But we're talking about greater understanding of the kingdom of God. And this is part five. Greater understanding of the kingdom of God. If you put your Bibles down. We're going to go ahead and pray. And if you would help pray in the house of God, if you have the Holy Ghost, subtitle God's instructions and order in the church. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for all the things that you've done doing and going to do. Father, we lift up your name and we magnify the word of God in this place that it will, Lord God, illuminate, Lord God, in our hearts, in our minds, that we will have understanding and clarity of what the word of God says, that we, Lord God, will walk up right before you. Father, anything that you see that is not right, any thought, Lord God, that is not right, God, anything we've done today, blot out our transgressions and hide our iniquities. Father, we confess our faults. We know that we have a long way to go. Please forgive us, oh God. We're trying, Lord Jesus. We struggle here and there, but we need you to help us. Send help and reinforcement, oh God. Lord God, I pray that you are creating us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. God, I pray that somebody, God, 
when life will be changed tonight if somebody has come and will come that has not been baptized and they will go down tonight and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Lord, help us in this season. Help us, Lord God, on this level. Help us, Lord Jesus, that we can go higher and in deeper depths, oh God. Father, I pray whatever you got to do, don't let us get bored in you. Don't let me get bored in the house of God. Don't let me go begin to get closer to the back door when I begin to walk out spiritually. Father, bring our minds back to the altar. Bring our hearts back to a place to see souls baptized and filled. Let your kingdom come. Lord God, let your will be done. We love you in this house. We thank you, oh God. We praise you and we take absolute authority in Jesus' name. Awake us now, God, that we don't sleep or slumber right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Can you open up your mouth and just say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Greater understanding of the kingdom of God. Again, part five. If you would go ahead and make sure your phone is on vibrate and it doesn't go off. I want to make sure that my timer is on so I don't hold you here uh, too long tonight. And so we want to make sure that I stick to that. We appreciate everyone being here. God bless you. Again, greater understanding of the kingdom of God. Again, part five. Subtitle, God's instructions and order in the church. Again, it is a scripture text that we have been studying on the Monday night. And on that Monday night, it is something that has been taught to us and told to us from the Old Testament. It is the mindset of Israel when they went over to the promised land. Their mindset is in Judges chapter 21, verse 25. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that was right in their own eyes, which means no ruler, no leader, no authority, no figure, authority, figure, no chain, no command, no order, no structure, no government, no king in Israel. Basically, every man or every woman, even children, is just doing what they thought was right. They were speaking and saying whatever they wanted to say, doing what they wanted to do. And if somebody maybe possibly didn't agree with them, then they would disconnect themselves from that person, basically what we say today. Don't nobody or can't nobody judge me but God. And I say to you in the time of those days with Israel, we see that happening even today. And it is trying to creep into the house of God. But we understand what Paul said in Romans 15 and 4. For what sort of things were written aforetime is written for our learning. So we are going to learn regarding the kingdom of God. Some things that we will look in the Old Testament and in the New Testament and also see it from today where the church is right now. Where is the body of Christ today? Where is the local church? The local members in that assembly, where is the mind of that child of God? Where is the behavior? And I say to you, you and I, we can take note on where we are individually and as a body. It is in our last couple of sessions that we learn, brothers and sisters, regarding the word Lord. The word Lord. The biblical meaning of the word Lord, it is master. It is master. Brother TJ, it is master. When you say Jesus is my Lord, you're saying he's my owner. Jesus is my owner. But we live in a day that we say, no, nobody owns me. Nobody is my master. There is a heritage that we can go all the way back for some time when we talk about slavery and all of that. So to my, a lot of my minorities, they don't want to hear anything about the word master. But I'm saying to you that if Jesus is your Lord and you're claiming him to be your Lord, then that word means he's my master or he's my owner. And if Jesus does not own you and he's not your master, then you have another master or another owner. That other master and owner, it is Satan. Satan is the one that tells or controls that world, that evil world. We that live in the flesh. We that live in the flesh and many of us were operating in the flesh and letting the flesh lead us. Satan being the, the God of this world, tempting that flesh, this is why we did things that were evil in the eyes of God. But when I say Lord, or Jesus is my Lord, you're saying Jesus is my master. 
He is my owner. Whatever he tells me to do, I do it. Which makes me a slave unto Jesus. It makes me a servant unto him. I am a servant of the Most High God. I am a slave unto the Lord Jesus. That is my master, my owner. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. This is why somebody will say, you can get a tattoo, you can get a piercing, you can do this with your body, you can go and do this. Understand I was bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in my body. My body does not belong to me, it belongs to God. With that being said, I can't just do what I want to do with my body. My body must glorify God. Understand and in spirit. And so Apostle Paul gave us more information when speaking to the saints of Corinth. When I look at the book of Corinthians, Paul is writing a letter to the Corinth. And Corinthian church was a hard-headed church. It was a difficult church. But in this setting, they were talking about circumcision. But he says these important words. In the context of the scripture, it was about circumcision. But what Paul said, listen to what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20. He said, yes, each of you should remain as you were when God called you. Basically, don't start going off of there doing this circumcision thing. But he says to this, are you a slave? Don't let that worry you. But if you get a chance to be free, take it. And remember, verse 22, if you were a slave when the Lord called you, you are now free in the Lord. And if you were free when the Lord called you, you are now a slave of Christ. God paid a high price for you and I. So don't be enslaved, watch this, by the world. Don't let the world try to pull you back to my new converts, to those that are in the house of God. Don't allow Satan to pull you back into the world. Don't go back and be entangled or be enslaved with the world. To the graduates, my graduates, don't go back and let the enemy start to enslave you in the world now that you've graduated. Yes, we are servants in the kingdom of God, but we are also, watch this, sons and daughters. Yes, I'm a slave, but I'm a son and I'm a daughter. I'm a son, but you are a daughter in the kingdom of God. There is a difference. We talked about it last time. Our president, John F. Kennedy, 35th president, I think I might have said 34, but 35th president, we talked about that when he was in the Oval Office in the White House. Yes, understand, his son and daughter, they are U.S. citizens, but J.F. Kennedy is their father. What does that mean? Yes, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, my master. But I have a different relationship with him. He's my father. So just because I'm in the kingdom, yes, I'm in the kingdom. But the best thing about being in God's kingdom, that king that's over the kingdom, he's a father. He's our father. And so if you look at them, watch this. I show these pictures so that you can see Look at the children. They're not really worried about their father being the president. They're not really worried about the wars that are happening or maybe going to happen or the conflicts that's going on in the world that their daddy is handling. They're not worried about any of that. What are they doing? They're just around their father. Whether they're under the desk, playing in the room, that's a very important room, the Oval Office. A lot of decisions are made there. But to these children, they're not worried about that because they're with their who? Their father. The relationship is far greater, people of God. When the king is our father. When the ruler is our father. We who are lower than the angels, the Bible says. We are lower than the angels. But what does God tell the angels to do for us? Watch over. God tells these angels, watch over them. We admire those, I know I did. 
I look at the Old Testament, I look at these prophets, and I look at them and see how they operate, and I say, man. But understand, even though I admire the prophets, Jesus lets me know that, watch this, that the least in his kingdom is greater than John the Baptist, who was the great prophet that God talked about. Jesus also said these words when he was in the flesh. He says in John 15 and verse 14. Notice John 15 verse 14 says, you are my friends. If you do so, whatever, I command you. Now, yes, we can shout and say, I am a friend of God, as that song says. I am a friend of God. But he says, if you are my friends, if, if you do, Whatsoever I command you. If we do not do what he commands us, don't think that he is your friend. Henceforth, I call you not, watch this, servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. I have called you friends. All things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. It is in God's kingdom we have watched his benefits. Our master treats us differently. Our master calls us friends, no longer servants. But you and I have to watch this choose whose kingdom or who do we want to serve? Matthew 6 and 24, notice the book says, no one can serve two masters. Saints of God, you're listening tonight. We cannot serve two masters. Either we're going to serve God, our Father, or we're going to serve Satan. You cannot say, I'm not serving either one right now. I haven't made my decision. Nobody can say, I haven't made my decision. By default, if you're not serving the Lord Jesus according to the word of God, by default, you serve Satan. You might say, I didn't choose Satan. By default, if you're not serving the Lord Jesus, according to the word, not your opinion, not what we think, but by default, we serve Satan. Book says no one can serve two masters. But either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in man. That's money or possession, fame, status, or whatever is valued more than the Lord. So you cannot serve God and then say I'm serving Satan or I'm doing my thing in the world. Or you have your own mindset. How many know that Satan was kicked out of his position because what he wanted to do was not what God wanted? Anybody know that? I mean, just raise your hand real high that you know that Satan was pushed out of his position because he did not want to do what God said to do. Amen. By that, you and I need to learn that same thing. That if we don't want to do what he says to do, then we're taking all the iniquity of the heart that he has. I'm not going to do what God says. I'm not going to do what's been put before me. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do this. So many times we look at Satan and we say, oh, he sold this and he sold that. But if we're not careful, we can operate just like him. Yes. Mindset needs to be, I'm only serving the Lord. But you can't serve God on one day or one time or serve God how you feel you should serve. And then on the next day you do this or you don't serve him at all. Either you're going to serve the Lord or you're going to serve Satan. Understanding the kingdom helps us, people of God. It perfects us. It helps us to go on to perfection. And to look at more things about from a greater perspective. When we understand and get a greater understanding of the kingdom, when we study this, it teaches us that, watch this, how there is only one king. When I say that there is only one king, that means there is only one ruler. He has the final say. Can you tell your neighbor, Jesus the King has the final say? Nobody else can say anything over Jesus. Once that word goes out, he has the final say. 
That's it. Ain't no questions being asked. Ain't no rebuttals. Ain't no, well, but what about this? But what about this? But what if this is my situation? But what if this is my situation? Jesus being the king has the final say. He is the only true king in this kingdom. And so when we study him, we can realize the only way to know anything about the king, brothers and sisters, you and I have to study the kingdom. We have to get a greater understanding of the kingdom. Let me say why. Because people of God, if we don't study the kingdom of God and get a greater understanding, meaning if we just know the kingdom from a surface level, then that makes us prone to do something wrong. If I don't study the kingdom of God, then watch this, that makes me prone of doing something wrong in the kingdom. And it's just like this. When you get a job, they give you what is called, or I'm sure some still do it, if you don't, let me know. But they give you this book. This book has all the procedures and the policies. It has everything that is given to you to know about that particular company. If you don't have that, then you have what is called a trainer. You stick with that trainer for maybe a 90-day probation. Because they have to watch this walk you through of all the do's and the don'ts. You have to go through this type of training because watch this, it's teaching you what not to do or what can get you, watch this, fired or terminated. So if you are a teacher, if you are a manager, supervisor, if you just are an employee, somebody has to talk to you, walk with you, give you maybe a booklet to go over to study if you play sports. You have to learn these things so that you and I, watch this, don't do anything incorrect. Because if we continue to do incorrect things, then that will cause us to be terminated. Does that make sense? Yes. Terminated. So when you get hired on a job, there has to be some type of training that you go through so that you will know if you do this, you won't get fired. Anybody know what I'm talking about? As a teacher, if you do one specific thing, and I, there may be more than one, but you know to yourself, what's that one thing that if you do, is an immediate termination? What is that? Teachers, can you talk to me? Okay, say it, say it. to the teachers. Let me see, are you teachers? You teach? Okay, to the teachers. What's the one thing you can do and you'll get terminated? Hit a student. So that's the one thing you don't want to do because you know for a fact termination. Does that make sense? Any managers, managers, your employees, what's the one thing that you know for a fact if they do is immediate termination? Steal from the safe or steal out of the drawer. That's an immediate. That's not even like, let me talk to you. Especially if it's on camera. To the nurses, what's an immediate termination or something that will take your license immediately? Wrong meds? Wrong meds and what else? Patient and bad men. And drunk and driving. Drunk and driving? Yeah. Can immediately take your license? I think so. Okay. Okay. That's immediate. Quick. Quick. Ain't no conversation about that, is it? Is there a conversation with that? With the board. Is there a conversation I can have with? I'm just gone. Now, what if you don't know that? What if you don't know that? Those who work in daycare. What's an immediate termination? You have a business? What's something that will shut that business down? Findings. Say it again. Findings. 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 Just give me one, one immediate find. What's something that will immediately shut that, that, that daycare down? Um, to the ones that have daycare. Oh 
Safety hazards? Safety hazards. Is there anything else? Sister? Being confidentiality. confidentiality. You start telling people about other people's stuff. Immediate termination. Immediate. What I'm saying is this for this. If you and I don't know certain things in the kingdom, and people of God, I'm saying that we can be immediately put out of the kingdom. What I'm saying is that we can do something wrong. What I'm saying is that if the rapture comes back and you're doing that thing that will terminate you, you'll be lost. Right. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So studying the word of God or studying get a greater understanding of the kingdom helps us. So this is why I'm teaching this. Because there are boundaries that we need to know. The Bible lets us know, I know people don't like this. But how many know in the Old Testament what sort of things are written? That God told Moses to set the boundaries. God told Moses to set boundaries. Anybody know that God told Moses to set boundaries? Yeah. Moses setting those boundaries, watch this. He didn't go to the people or even to, watch this. Um, he didn't go to Joshua and ask Joshua. Joshua, should I put these boundaries? He didn't ask anybody for that. But God told Moses, which is a type of the pastor, he said, set boundaries for the people. Now you have to set boundaries. Basically what you're setting is set boundaries on this mountain because if anybody touch it, God said, I'm going to kill it. That's how he did it in the Old Testament. So Moses is the one that comes out there. Now watch this. If you know your people, how many again know your children? You have that one child that would do this. I didn't know. Any mother's got that one child that would be like, I didn't know. So what do you do to try to save them? What do you do to save them? You set boundaries so far away that they don't kill themselves. Yes. If I know that this one will possibly cross over the boundary and somehow go like this, what's going to happen? What's going to happen if I touch it? If I know I got one like that, I'm going to set that boundary so far away from it. Why? Because I don't want them to kill themselves. So knowing or understanding things about the kingdom, sometimes people sit there and say, we've already talked about this. But sometimes you've got to do some more teaching on it, setting boundaries so that people don't make mistakes. Does that make sense what I'm saying? It's like when your kids be like this. You already told us that. Tell us something we don't know already. But you keep repeating yourself. Because if you repeat it, then what you're doing is giving a muscle memory for them to remember. And so the book lets me know that Moses set these boundaries, and that's in Exodus chapter 19. And if you look at it, look at verses 12. Exodus 19 verse 12. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people around about, saying, Take heed to yourself that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whatsoever touches, or whosoever touches the mount, shall be what? Surely put, to death. Surely put to death. So Moses has to be the one to set the boundaries. Because if anybody touch it, he's going to kill it. Moses being a good pastor, Set those boundaries to try to keep any people or animals from being killed. See, when we don't know boundaries, we kind of cross them. Let me give you an example. Uh, let me put it like this. One time, a 
um, I'll give an example. It's about me. I don't want to embarrass anyone else, so I'll just. I remember that Mother Davy one time. She said, we were at the church. Now she said to me, son. And I had a friend, uh, Brother uh, William in the car with me. Um, and she said, son, I need you to take me home. Don't you go around this way? Because dad is going to be up here for a little while. Well, I said, sure. Yeah, yeah, Mother Davy, I'll take you home. No problem. Now, <laughs> me and the brother, he's in the back seat because I'm, you know, I'm taking him home as well. So while we're driving, we're talking, we're laughing. As we're talking and laughing, I'm beginning to think that me and Mother David are becoming very close to friends. So as we're talking, she talks about somewhere it starts, she starts talking about Bishop. Now she has a nickname for Bishop. She calls him D. Well, as we're talking, we get there and we're driving, all of a sudden, oh, um, I guess I must have crossed the boundary. Because I start talking and I called him, watch this. But we were friends. <laughs> we're talking, we're laughing. And I said, Well, you better tell D. I just saw a finger in my face from the from the passenger seat. She said, he's Pastor David to you. My mouth was dry. Because I'm like, where did this come from? We were having a joyful ride. Where did I disrespect? I disrespected because I got too comfortable. See, now, some people don't understand this. But let me help you understand. If you have a boss, there are certain companies and jobs, you don't go to your boss talking to them like your friends. There is a respect level. Mother David has told us that she, I'm not your friend. I don't want to be your friend. I'm here to help you with your walk with God. So when you start to overstep boundaries, then she has to put me back in place. Yes. Now some people say, I don't like all this title stuff and this and this and that. That's ridiculous because it's like that in the world. In the world, you're not gonna go to your boss any kind of way. You're not gonna walk up to the one that owns the company, the president of the company talking about, yo, what up, John? You're not going to go to the administrator that's over the schools, talking about like, hey, Shirley. Now, you might know her in a way, but you ain't going to do that on the job. All right. See, when we don't know boundaries, we cross them. Yep. Yes. And we get comfortable. And we kind of do what we do. And we'll be like, what's wrong with them? Right. It's because you cross boundaries. It would be like, watch this, me having a conversation with your wife, brothers. If I have the wrong conversation, you know what you're going to say? You didn't cross the line, Pastor. Yep. Right. Because why? There's a boundary. Right. There's a respect level. There's a boundary. And so it's the same thing in the kingdom. That if I don't know these certain things in the kingdom, I'm going to mess up. And what am I going to do? I'm going to cross over some boundaries. Right. I'm going to cross over some places that I shouldn't have gone to. Right. 
But if you don't know that, then watch this. And you don't understand that. That means you don't understand. You don't have no idea about boundaries. Boundaries. Right now, real quick. Raise your hand if anybody can just show up at your house. Nobody? Can anybody just show up at your house not in your door like, hey, and come on in? How many can sit there and say, you got to call first before you come out? Some people are like, no, don't just be showing up. Especially if you're trying to come in and don't be just showing up. What I'm trying to say is this. You yourselves have boundaries. Let me show you a boundary. Come here, sir. I'm sticking right here. We move on. We all have boundaries. Now, if somebody came to you and got this close to you, something is off. Because there's a boundary. Two feet, bro. Two feet. If somebody come close to you like that, brothers, some man just came close to you just like this. What do you do? Do you see what I'm saying? Sisters, I hope if somebody comes to you, got too close to you like this. There's boundaries. Now watch this. They might say, watch this. In my family, we, we be like laying on each other. That's what you do in your family. That's what you do in your family. Now watch this. If we don't know, we'll be thinking everybody's like that. No. So if you are in the world and you come into the kingdom of God, many times we'll bring what we are or how we were in the world and bring that in the kingdom thinking, watch this, that the kingdom is just like that too. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yes. So that means we have to learn the boundaries or the rules and regulations in the kingdom. See, out there in the, out there in the world, you can be like, hey, psst. Hey, Miss Lady. You, come here. But let you come in a church talking about, hey, psst. Red dress. <laughs> The one on the front. We don't do that here. We don't do that here. This is why if somebody do that, they will get corrected in here. Does that make sense what I'm saying? There are certain clothes and certain things we don't wear in here. But if you don't know the kingdom and you don't have a greater understanding you're coming here and thinking, we crazy. It's like this. Raise your hand if you've been to another country before. Born in another country. Another country. <laughs> We're from America. And you go to Mexico. We go over there. This brother is Mexican, and I'm sitting there saying like this. Will somebody speak English? Watch this. Now that's crazy. Because where are you at? In Mexico. We all the way in Mexico, and I'm mad and going on because don't nobody speak English. What I'm saying is you can't bring American like demanding it should be like this. You can't bring the world into the kingdom thinking it's going to be like the world. We can't have the mindset or operate. I don't care if you're a manager on your job. You're not the manager here. I don't care if you have no supervision on your job. You do what you do. 
But here in the kingdom, we don't do that. But if that's how we live day to day, and sometimes we can cross boundaries. Because that's how I operate every day. Ain't nobody over me all day. So when I come to church, I forget. I ain't at work. I'm in church. I'm in the kingdom. But you and I got to function and operate all the time in the kingdom. Because that's what we're part of. Does that make sense, people? Yeah. Can we clap our hands up to that in Jesus' name? Yeah. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what? And all of these things shall be added unto you. Put it in the Amplified. The version says this. The first and most important, seek, aim, and strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, which means his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God. And all these things will be given unto you also. So when I seek after the kingdom of God, if I get greater understanding, I'm trying to aim or strive after his kingdom, his righteousness. I'm trying to, try to reach how he does things, his ways in the kingdom. And if I don't do that, I'm going to make some mistakes. I'm going to do some wrong things. And when I'm rebuked by that, I'm not going to understand it. But if you get greater understanding, you will. Stay there, sir. Thank you. Let me get a look at the definition of the word kingdom. Definition of the word kingdom. A country, a state, or territory ruled by a king or a queen. A realm associated with or, or regarded as being under control of a particular person or thing. Realm, domain, or rulership. In the Bible, when you see kingdom, you'll see it like this. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of Christ. They all mean the same thing. When you see in the Bible, the kingdom of God, this one says the kingdom of heaven. This one says the kingdom of Christ. It is associating to that righteous kingdom who Jesus Christ is over. When you read in the scriptures, you'll see that. And so there is only one king. Yes, in the Bible, we've been reading about kings like King Saul, and David, and Solomon, even the heathen kings, Nebuchadnezzar, who God appointed. But in our lives today, we only have one king. And that is who? Jesus Christ. He is the one that's over all things. He is the one that ruleth over all things. Once you and I learn, once we get a greater understanding, then a lot of things that, that, that are preached or taught to us, we won't have a problem with. I do know, I do know that, watch this, that many times that our new converts will have a struggle. They'll have a struggle with some of the things that are being said. But once you and I get an understanding, we'll understand the structure of church, how we are not to do this or to do that, the reason we are doing this and the reason why we've been told not to do that, the reason why uh, you would say, uh, God is calling you to this and God is giving this word and God is said to do this and uh, leadership has asked for this and this and that. If their hearts are in the right place, we will not push back because we understand the kingdom. Basically, watch this. If we get an understanding, it will help us with the origins and the laws and the regulation of church structure and church order. If we actually get a greater understanding, we'll know the characteristics. We'll learn and understand the characteristics of how we are to be like Christ. It will help us to have a godly mindset here in the church of the living God. It will help us to know and how to be a part and behave in the church. It will help us to understand what is required to continue to operate in the church. If we get a greater understanding, it will help us to understand, watch this, uh, rather we're teaching on holiness Holiness standards Now some who have been in church for a while They understand holiness But understand in the kingdom The kingdom teaches us Even how to dress How we are to look On the outward And what is required for us On the inward In the world and in some churches Many would say certain things are okay Let me show you these pictures the way we wear our hair, our clothes, how we look, what we do. 
Sometimes in the world, or even in churches, people will say, what's wrong with that? I'm going to show you that that's not in the key. In the world, some of our brothers wear their hair like this. Now, is it neat? Is it lined up? Yes. But he has a ponytail. Or what they call it, a bun? Yeah, high bun. Uh, it's a, oh, they put a man on the front. <laughs> a, man. a man bun. A man bun. Now, I don't know if that's his hair or if that's extensions. No, that's his hair. His Spanish hair. But this is, in the world, maybe some girl will sit there and say, well, he look cute with his long hair. In the world, women will shave their hair. Now, don't get me wrong, I do understand that some of our sisters have dealt with different hair issues where their hair fall out readily and different things. But in the world, many will do this and will be like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why can I not do that? Why can I not cut my hair or shave my hair? I'm not talking about if you have a medical issue. A medical issue. But some would be like, what's wrong with me not doing this? Now there's clothes that some would say, I don't see nothing wrong with this, what I got on. I don't see nothing wrong with it. Too much. I don't see anything wrong They shouldn't be looking. No, it's in your face. They shouldn't be looking. Oh, Jesus. I can't help what God bless me with. That's the world. And some churches. Somewhere here was a dad say, please. She working that day. She only kept by her size and she working that day. She proud. And nobody is saying about being proud. Some brothers, what would be the reason? Now in churches or in the world, some churches, this is okay. But once you find out and get an understanding of the kingdom, and when you hear preaching, you'll be like, go ahead, preach, preacher. You'll be like, he ain't doing nothing but telling the truth. But if you don't have a greater understanding or know the kingdom, you will sit there and say, he talking about people. I don't like that church. Watch this. They got too many rules. Too many rules. They try to tell people what they can and cannot wear. Ain't nobody telling you what you can and cannot wear. I'm just saying if you're a part of the kingdom, there's a way. If you are not part of the kingdom, okay, you're not a part of it. Does that make sense? But once you get into the kingdom, there is a way that we do things. There's a way that we look. There's a way that we operate. And if you don't have greater understanding, you will sit there and say, he let her say, but he won't let me. He let him do that, but he won't let me. You talk to them, but you don't talk to me. You let you seem like you talking all being friends with them, but you don't be friends. Watch this. If you cross boundaries, I got to set a boundary for you. Now, this one may understand boundaries and not come incorrect. But you haven't learned. So I gotta set a boundary for you. So if it's a new convert, I will say, let me talk to them. Let me talk to them. I don't need you saying to them. I don't need nobody going to any new convert saying, you know you ain't should be wearing that. Leave that alone. Leave that to me. Does that make sense? Because you have to give them time and make sure there's understanding. But watch this. But if you won't get up here, right. <laughs> you gonna get up here? Yes. I have to bring it to you now. Yes. yes. I have to come to you now. Yes. If you're gonna stand on post representing the church, welcome. Are oh, you doing know, good morning? I have to come to you now. I can't have you any kind of way. That would be like a manager. 
If I know that, watch this, you can't talk, I'm not putting you on drive through. If I know that you can't talk, hello, welcome. I'm not letting you know. You get back there on the line. If I own the bank and you want to be at the front as a teller and you don't know how to conduct yourself, you're not going to be up there because there's a way. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I'm checking how you look, what you wear, and all of that. Now watch this. If you're not a part of the kingdom, but the closer and the more greater understanding you get, you'll be like, oh. So don't get upset. What we're trying to do is learn a greater understanding, get a greater understanding of the kingdom. Does that make sense? Yeah. In the kingdom, I just can't do what I want to do. In the kingdom, I just can't do what I want to do. Watch this. In the kingdom, I can't let my kids do what they want to do. Does that make sense? Some people will follow the kingdom, the rules and regulations, but then they'll let their kids do whatever. No, no. Not in the kingdom. Not in the real church. And so the Bible says this. So you'll get it. Watch this. I want you to go. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 9. Get you, sir. Stay there. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Make it simple. And I want women to be, watch this, modest. Do you see that? To be modest. I want the women to be modest. Modest means that, watch this, you're not really, you're not trying to put attention. It doesn't show forth things. It's not loud or bling bling how we talk today. You're not trying to get the attention of the opposite sex. You're not trying to be like the world is, show off. But he says, and I want women to be modest in their appearance. They should wear, watch this, Decent and appropriate clothing and not drawing attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair or by wearing gold or pearls or expensive clothes. So we're not getting here trying to show off the Gucci bags, the, the stilettos, the diamonds in the wrists. We're not in here trying to show all that. Brothers, we're not showing off the Mavados. We're not showing off all of the, the wing tips, the gator shoes. We're not showing that all off. You hear what I'm saying? But we're, we're to be modest. It's okay to have a nice suit on, but it's modest. Like a brother coming in here with a pink suit on. Something is wrong. Now what I mean by that is, I'm not trying to draw attention to myself. You hear what I'm saying? Now you can wear what color you want. But if you're going to operate in the kingdom, brother, you're not coming up here with a pink suit on. Because watch, we're not trying to draw attention to ourselves. If a sister come up here with a short skirt right above the, by the thigh, you're drawing attention to yourself. If she's wearing something that shows her cleavage, and we're doing a song, low, 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 keep the devil low. You showed me too much. If you got to pick up a pen, and all this is being seen, That's not how we do it in the kingdom. Now, I, I know that other churches or other places may not teach this or say this. You get what I'm saying? 
Their mindset is, come as you are. There are some brothers that are built, nice, strong, built. We didn't come in to see your pets. Does that make sense? We don't want to see these things. Because our focus is on who? King. Jesus. Our focus is on the king. But if you don't understand this, you'll be like, this is crazy. This is why in the kingdom, watch this, the Bible lets us know, we teach us. But this is why, sisters, you will not see. I'm, I'm teaching. I'm doing it. You're not going to see the piercings. You won't see that. You won't see the different color of the nail polishes and all of that. Because watch, modesty. Modesty. Somebody say, when you're trying to change up our beauty, where are you getting your beauty from? Right. You're trying to change up my beauty. Where are you getting that idea from? See, when we talk about the kingdom, when we get really in depth with greater understanding, people don't mind being saved. People don't mind. Sometimes, I would say, sometimes people don't mind just getting in baptized in the water. Get the Holy Ghost at that moment, speaking in other tongues. But then when we lay it on you, the greater understanding that now that you're in the kingdom, this is what it is. You'd be like, I didn't know I signed up for that. <laughs> But people blame that, that church. It's that church. It's not the church. It's the kingdom. This is how we operate in the kingdom. See, most preachers wouldn't do this. Why? Because they lose members. People wouldn't preach this because they lose members. But I'm not here to sit there and be like counting the members. I want people to come. But I want you to be heaven ready. I want you to be heaven right. Does that make sense? Yeah. I got to get it closed out. Notice it says in verse 10, for women who claim to be devoted to God should make themselves attractive by the good things they do. If you're going to be attractive, it should be by the good things you do, not your body. Not trying to promote your cleavage, your behind, your stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. The Bible says, watch this. Isn't it obvious that it is disgraceful for a man to have long hair? He says, it's a shame. It's disgraceful. So if I see, you know, I'm a barber. I tell you, I'm a barber. I don't cut hair much now, but I'm a barber. So don't ask me about cut your hair. I don't do that. But the skill, I've been blessed with the skill to cut hair. So when I see like little boys, young men, I be, I, I want to, I, that's when the, it comes out. Let me cut your hair. Because I be wanting to cut that ponytail or cut that hair down so that he can look like a little boy. Yes. But today, especially in, in the South, you have the young men who have the locks and the dreads and all of these things. And I guess it's, a, it's the style. It's the style. But in the kingdom, I'm not talking about the style in the kingdom. And isn't long hair a woman's pride and joy, but it has been given to her as a covering. Verse 16, but if anyone wants to argue about this, you want to argue about it, I simply say that we have no other customs than this. And neither do God's other churches. So if you want to argue with me, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to just ask you, are you in the kingdom? And if you say I am, I'm going to say okay. But this is about the kingdom. 
I end it with this. Unless you were born and raised in Indian tribe, the tribes like Apache, Apache, Cherokee, uh, Cheyenne, Chinook, Com Comanche tribe. If you look at them, what they have on, many of us, if we saw an Indian with their feathers and all of that, we would probably be amazed or someone would say, look at all the feathers. Now, if I would ask you, would you put it on and walk around with it? Now, someone would say, well, I'll put it on for a day, like it's a costume party. But that would be not something in your closet. There are some tribes that you will see them, they'll have a big old ring in their nose. Yeah. A ring, big ring in their nose. I ask, would you put one in? No. But they do it because it symbolizes something in their tribe. Just like if you have other ones, like look at the, the Jews. The Jews wear certain things. Anybody ever seen this type? Of this cat. All right? It is the kippah and then the talit. The hat is the kippah and this is the talit. The strings is the zizi. And then you have what is called the teflon. The teflon is the box that goes around their arm and then into their forehead. Now you and I, when we went to, over there to Israel, would be like, what they got on? But they wear it for a reason. That's what they wear in Jews, in Judaism, for a reason. So when people see our sisters in long dresses, many people will make fun of you. They'll make fun of you with your long dresses on and not showing cleavage in your body or the curves and the shapes of your body. They'll make fun of that. When they don't see us brothers sagging or talking like the world and we talk, when they sit there and say, why are you talking properly? Am I talking proper or am I just talking? Then you got the ignorant ones that will say something crazy. Why are you talking like white people? What well, did I do white people talk? See, if you don't understand and you're ignorant of the fact, then you will say anything. I'm saying the same thing about the kingdom. You will think what I'm saying is ignorant and stupid or ain't called for, watch this, because we don't have greater understanding. We've been in a basement somewhere. Or we've been maybe went to a church that didn't preach it like this. Or bring it like this. Or they gave no explanation of what they were saying. And when you are part of the kingdom, you should get greater understanding. But if you're looking for a church to let you just do what you want to do, there are many out there. There are so many out there that just to let you do whatever you want. No accountability at all. But I tell you, you won't go far. Not in the kingdom of God. If you're here today, let us stand. Brothers and sisters, we all have a choice. We all have a Choice. Sister Alicia, can you come in for a second? Quick, come on over here. We all have a choice of who we're going to serve. And we all have a choice how we're going to serve him. No one is going to force you. Because can no one force you. Grown people will do what grown people want to do. But at the end of the day, no one will be able to say they did not know. Here you have two single people. I don't go home with them. I don't know what they do. But it's their choice, whatever they're going to do, is their choice. He has to remember he's in the kingdom, and she has to remember she's in the kingdom. But something happens once we leave here. I don't know what it is, but everything that we've learned, it goes out the window. We forget it all.
Or maybe we remember it, but we just disregard it. So what happened today is what happened. But these two single people can do something that's against the word of God. It's their choice. But hear me. They knew. They knew. Did you understand the lesson today? Did you understand the lesson today? Is there anything that I said that was didn't make sense? Is there anything that I said that didn't make sense? It was clear. And Mr. Adams, come so. Sister, come here. We're gonna go. These two are married. I definitely don't go home with them. But they made the decision to be married. The only thing that we will ever do, they do, will just come to me for any counsel. I don't know what they do if they don't tell me. And I'm not trying to ask. The less, the better. But however she acts at home, as a wife, that's up to her. And however he treats her as a husband, that's up to him. But neither of them are going to be able to say they did not know. What was said today, was it understandable? Was it understandable? Did I say anything that was confusing? Did I say anything that was confusing? Everyone has this choice. Everyone has this choice. Last one. Mother, come here. Come around, please. I don't go home with mother. I don't know what she does. You work, right, mother? I don't go to her job. I don't know who lives with her and who does not. I'm not there. And whatever she does, it's on her. Mother, did you understand what I said today? Was there anything confusing? You understood. At the end of the day, you and I have the choice whether we're going to be in the kingdom or not. Whether we're going to operate in the kingdom or not. Does that make sense, people of God? Let us pray. Thank you so much. If you're here right now, you can come to the altar. If you want to come, you can come. We're getting a greater understanding of the kingdom of God. How we are to conduct ourselves. Understanding that there is only one king and he has regulations, statutes. He's teaching us through the word of God by the Holy Ghost. Giving us understanding and clarity. Yes. Convicting our hearts, not condemning us, but convicting us. Yes. That we would walk upright. That we would walk upright. Thank you for teaching me boundaries, God. Thank you for helping me, Lord. Yes. If there's somebody here today that the word of God has talked to your heart, when you saw yourself in the word of God, that you want to make sure, God, I want to be right with you. In your kingdom, I have to be held accountable in what I do. Whether I think it's not simple or small or insignificant, it is your kingdom. Not Pastor Garment, not Pastor Collins, not Bishop David, no preacher on this earth. But it is your kingdom, Lord. We're so grateful that you, Lord, are patient with us and kind and long suffering. As we leave this place tonight, I pray that many have gotten understanding. That there are some things that we might have done, God. It was not in your will, but you are helping us get greater understanding. I don't need to go and ask somebody how this message was. Let it just deal with me and talk to me. Let your will be done, God. Let it be done in me. Create in us a clean heart, oh God, renew a right spirit. Right now, lay your hand up on someone that's at this altar right there. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the body of Christ here in Belgium. I pray for the brothers and the sisters and the mothers and the elders. We went, Lord God, a little time to try to explain. I apologize for the help me. I pray that God, the saints of God, will God go forward from this day forward. Knowing God that there are boundaries. Knowing God that you see certain things. You know all things, God. And you see those certain things, God, to correct us. Show us. You see all things. But it's those certain things you're bringing right before our eyes. We ask that you, God, wash us now. Cleanse us now. From the older to the younger, God. Yes. Father, we pray that you help us, Lord God. Yes. That we will be the king. Yes. We love you. We thank you. Trouble the waters of baptism. Help us to do this all in love, God. Yes. In love. And we will do it in peace and in yes. We give you glory. We give you honor. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters.